Hey y'all, I'm Shauna. Welcome in or welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about Target. America seems to be obsessed with Target and not just one specific demographic, but it kind of seems like all the demographics love Target. Like there's something for everybody at Target and TikTok in specific really paints this picture that Gen Z's are obsessed with Target. People, people really love their Target. And I can't say that I disagree with this because I do enjoy Target. When Target was in Canada, I was there a lot. I had a Target that was very close to me and I was, I was a stand for Target. I was, but this was also circle like, you know, 2015 when I loved to shop. So it makes some, some sense, but there's also something that's special from Target. It's its own special little experience. I do have to admit as much as I am a hater, um, Target has some good snacks. I'm getting off track here. But why is Target so special and so beloved? What about it makes it so great? We're going to talk about it today. I'm going to talk about why I think Target has come to amass a, a following and a special place in the heart of Americans. I have some of my own ideas that come from my own observations, you know, being in Target and observing people online, but also hearing some information from insiders, specialists, or just Target lovers. So we're going to get started. And I do want to say that I very recently went to the US. Um, I went to Detroit to go eat some pizza, and I'm not joking about that. And while I was there, I made a trip to Target specifically so I could shoot B-roll for this video. Committed to the craft, y'all. Um, I don't have a ton of time to spend in that store. Like I had like maybe 15, 20 minutes. So we got, we got some IRL B-roll and then obviously had to go get the Dunkin' uh, before going. I mean, I think the ritual is Starbucks as we'll talk about. And I do have to say, I tried the Dunkin' Pumpkin Spice flavor for the very first time. I've never had it before. And it's better than Starbucks. Like people love the Starbucks PSL, which is fine, I guess. Dunkin's is just better in my opinion. Right now, I know we're not, we're not supporting Starbucks right now. I know, but just flavor wise, if, if you've tried both, which one do you prefer? So back on topic, I think it's important to talk about just how popular is Target because I found this a little bit interesting. Tick, because TikTok and Instagram give this impression that it is more popular than it actually is. So if you were to ask me before filming this video, if I were to rank popularity of stores in the US by let's say retail sales, I probably would have said Target's gotta be like number three, you know, uh, probably behind Amazon and Walmart. Those are big players. Uh, Target is not number three. It's not even number five. According, and I'm looking at the information here, according to the National Retail Federation, in terms of retail sales in the United States only, so even if some of these stores sell products globally, uh, only accounting for retail sales in the United States, Target is number nine behind Walmart, Amazon, Costco, Kroger, Home Depot, and CVS. I am kind of shocked that Home Depot has more retail sales. Now, this isn't all fair comparisons because many of these top players, Walmart, Costco, and Kroger are all stores that primarily sell groceries. But if you think about Home Depot and CVS, uh, neither of those are grocery stores and are still... Uh, make more in retail sales. The whole point of bringing this up is that Target is popular, but not as popular as I thought. And this is just a really great reminder for me, hopefully for you too, of fact-checking reality because so much of TikTok can like misconstrue our perception of reality, making things seem more real or common than they actually are. But seeing middle-class women haul stuff on Target is not representative of the entire population of even middle-class Gen Z and millennials. They are not as popular as TikTok might lead you to believe. Walmart is Target's biggest competitor. 
in Walmart is far bigger and more popular than Target. I knew Walmart was bigger. I didn't realize how disproportional uh, their stores are. I don't think that made sense. How much more stores they have. So Walmart has over 4,500 stores in the US and Target has under 2,000. They have 18 and change. Also, fun fact that I learned about Walmart, Texas, just the state of Texas alone has the most amount of Walmart stores. I think they have like 500 or so. And the state of Texas makes up about 11% of Target's domestic sales. One state, 11%. Crazy. And Walmart is Target's greatest competitor and biggest competitor. I think Walmart would still be more popular even if they had less stores because they are convenient. And yes, they are convenient because they have more stores than Target. So you are more likely to run into a Walmart than a Target. However, Walmart has become the place where you get gro- where you go for groceries and then get other things. Whereas Target, even though they do have groceries, they're more of the store where you go for the other things and then buy the grocery. You can run almost all of your errands, if not all of your errands at Walmart. They have bigger stores with just more stuff. In 2003, grocery sales made up about 56% of total Walmart US sales, whereas food and beverage sales made up about 20% of total Target sales of that same year. And we should be mindful that these are just estimations because how uh, both of these companies, how they classify things isn't entirely clear to us or how people are compiling this data is not entirely transparent. This is just like the best available data that is out there at this moment. Target very likely outperforms Walmart in other categories, but to the extent in which they might outperform them relative to their size is not entirely clear because of these categorizations. So here's an example. Walmart has a classification of health and wellness, which seems to me to be the most likely place to put beauty, like beauty products, but it's unclear. If beauty products are in that category, then health and wellness represent 10% of their total sales. Whereas Target, they have a very clear like beauty section on theirs, beauty and household essentials, that represents about 28% of their sales. And general merchandising is uh, everything else that's not health and wellness or grocery. There's also a category of other with no information. So general merchandising to me would include things like apparel, sports, and toys which represents about 32% of their sales. Target's closest to measure about 55% of their sales. People are overall going to Walmart for the groceries or they're spending the most amount of money on groceries. So people overall are going to Walmart for the groceries and they're going to Target for the beauty and personal care products as well as fashion products. This kind of lines up with what I'm seeing on socials. Like when I see people going to Target tends to be for the clothes, the beauty products. And when they are going for food, and we're going to talk more about this stuff, tends to be things that are exclusive to Target. And Target has built a great reputation of their in-house brands and they're building upon it, which I have lots of thoughts about that. But when like, people go to food stuff, it's generally not to go do their grocery shopping. It's those like little additions to their cart or for like specific seasonal stuff that they're not getting at Walmart and more of the beauty and wellness and clothes. Let's now talk about their market positioning. And Target positions themselves as a more premium place to shop. And they have more of the premium market share than Walmart. Walmart does not position themselves as a premium place in the slightest, and they don't need to in order to do well. I also don't mean to say that Target is bougie or that they don't do sales and discounts. They are more premium than Walmart, in my opinion. And I think that this more premium positioning is why people enjoy Target so much and it's part of the appeal. Part of this comes from the physicality of the store, like what it's physically like to walk into a Target and to be inside a Target. It's a more comfortable environment that I believe encourages people to stay. 
and to shop. Target is not a bookstore. I want to make that very clear. And Target is not attempting to be a bookstore. So what I'm about to say is not me saying Target is a bookstore, but Target, I think, has applied some of the practices of a bookstore and kind of tweaked them for their own context. Or they, you know, they've learned some lessons from them. Bookstores frequently have coffee shops attached to them or inside their buildings. And quite often bookstores have comfortable seating or, you know, places to read for their customers. Overall atmosphere of a bookstore tends to be more comfortable and inviting. I personally feel like in Target, there is a more comfortable and relaxing environment, which is most especially due to the attachment of the coffee shop. And the coffee shop or the inclusion of Starbucks goes a long way to making people more inclined to shop or feeling less rushed and like they can take their time. Overall, when I've gone into Targets, even a busy Target tends to be less busy than Walmart, less people shopping. There tends to be like wider aisles and more space between products, overall lower sight lines on shelves, and a more premium experience inside the store with like the fixtures that they have, as well as the signage. I want to talk about the cafe because Walmarts very often have restaurants attached, most notably McDonald's. McDonald's is a fast food restaurant, even if you go inside, and McDonald's is the place where you go in and out. And, you know, fast food, the whole connotation is like, is fast, get in and go, which I think uh, plays into what people might want from a Walmart. Walmarts tend to be crowded, busier, bigger people doing their errands. And so people, in my opinion, want to get in and out of the Walmart and the McDonald's supports that. The Starbucks, on the other hand, well, is also, I mean, the the business of Starbucks has really turned into mobile sales, but, you know, historically, Starbucks has been the place where you go and they have their whole idea of the third place where like, you know, Starbucks is an experience and you go and you sit down and you go meet people. And even though people do the mobile orders now, or that's a greater part of their business, I do still think that Starbucks has retained a perception of being more premium um, and also being this kind of comfortable, casual uh, place to hang out. And so when you attach a coffee shop, even if it wasn't Starbucks, I think a coffee shop makes Target a destination that kind of has that relaxing element to it. Yeah, or or even making going to Target a destination because a coffee shop is a destination. It kind of, you, you get the benefits of the perceptions of the coffee shop as like a category and that relaxing, take your time kind of atmosphere that a traditional coffee shop has. But When we have Starbucks, we have that added addition of all of the perceptions that one might have of Starbucks, which until the past year has been historically positive and premium. Uh, To kind of get back to the point on hand, Target has become this place, it's become the destination that you can get your coffee, which sets a leisurely tone for your visit and kind of, you know, casually... Uh, go peruse the aisles. I think you're more inclined to peruse or window shop or just kind of check it out in Target versus Walmart. And I really think that like the coffee shop sets the pace or sets the tone or expectation or maybe just enhanced what was already kind of there. So if you're an American who has access to both Walmart and Target, do you feel more inclined to like window shop, take your time, be relaxed at Target or at Walmart? Or do you feel kind of rushed or want to get in and out no matter where you go? I also, to kind of wrap up this premium feel, Target stores tend to have more carpet in them, which is interesting because I have personally not been to a Walmart with carpet in it, where I've been to plenty of Targets with carpet. The aisles tend to be wider in Targets, having more space between them, more room to maneuver, I do find like the beauty sections uh, in Target tend to be 
like more open space and less narrow and constricted, but that's just my own experience. And then there's also Ulta in some targets now. I also think that the brand offerings and the collaborations go a long way into making Target a fun place to shop, a more enjoyable or cooler place to shop. Because I think that overall Target has done way better with the internet brands or the viral brands than Walmart does, making them kind of a more trendy place. And then the collaborations that they've done have been a little bit more upscale. They've done collaborations with Bobble Bar, Isaac Mizrahi, Victoria Beckham, John Paul Gaultier, Alexander McQueen, to name a fruit, to name a few. Walmart has done collaborations, but I think they do more with celebrities than with designers or like brands. We're gonna we're gonna be on this brand train for just a second. And I think that Target's in-house brand have developed a really great reputation. All of their clothing are or yeah, all of their clothing, I believe it's all of them, are in-house brands. And then they have in-house brands in most categories, like with like home decor items. Um, there's also like the up and up brand, but then there's also a lot of, or in the food section, favorite day. I think it's kind of similar to Trader Joe where people love the Trader Joe's in-house brands, whereas the Walmart great value brand, I think has a negative reputation. And so the Target brands, I think offer some of the magic of Target, like people really love the Target brands. Some of the magic of Target are the brands that they offer. We've already talked about the in-house brands, but also they offer brands that are difficult to get elsewhere. I hear people talk about Finery, Olive and June, as well as Saltaire. This is just the personal care section. They've done, they've done a great job with influencer brands. I know Lemmy was recently available at Target be 2024. I would, however, uh, not suggest buying anything from Lemmy, given the fact that there is a class action lawsuit that has been initiated for misleading advertising claims, uh, which is Kourtney Kardashian's vitamin brand. I still think it's cool enough that people would be like, ah, yes. Or it's like internet buzzworthy enough where people are still excited about it. Target, however, has also used more premium techniques for merchandising. So John Hancock, a former merchandising professor at Drexel, who formerly worked for Target corporate, he talks about some of the differentiation between Walmart and Target. So this is super interesting and read it in full. Walmart's philosophy is stack it high and let it fly. That's what places like H&M and Uniqlo are all about. Target likes to borrow strategies of higher end retailers like Nordstrom. You don't see 50 t-shirts in Target stacked. It's only a few in every size. It creates the notion that it's a specialty item giving you the impulse to buy it because it makes you think that it's more special than it really is. Hancock also points out that the tech section of newer Target stores look almost exactly the same as Apple stores with minimalist, clean, and simple designs because the retailer actually borrowed heavily from Apple's in-store aesthetic. Target is pretty aware of their reputation because they're trying to cultivate it. They're trying, very actively trying to produce a higher end, more premium experience, which people overall enjoy. The cultural attitude or perception of these two companies has led to what feels like a bit of a class divide, or at least some classism or elitism that is happening. Walmart's reputation for being budget-friendly, for offering the best deals and cheapest prices, has enticed people or led people who are interested in deals or budgets to prefer Walmart. Their entire rollback phrasing of the early 2000s, I think really helped with this. And even though Target does have deals, Target does have sales and coupons, Walmart, I think, has just done a better job of associating themselves with the better pricing. Not just because they do regularly offer better pricing on many of those regular household products. So if somebody's looking for the deal, they're going to go to Walmart. 
but they've also, I think, cemented this cultural belief about them in people's minds. They've done a really great job of that. However, it's this kind of distinction in the market that has led to these cultural attitudes that I was talking about. And I think that overall, like the cultural attitude about Walmart has been on the negative side, or at least more negative than Target. And one of the proponents of that uh, is People of Walmart. This is a blog that opened in 2009 or began in 2009. Uh, still around today, although significantly less popular and less maintained, that showcasing Americans in Walmart. Although they claim to be satire, the claims of satire feel more like a way to cover themselves than anything. Satire is the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other topical issues. So is this technically satire? Sure. But this is satire that feels more mean-spirited. And in my opinion, there's a bit of a difference to, to use satire to make a bigger point about a cultural occurrence or norm, right? Like making a satire piece about overconsumption instead of regularly posting denigrating and mean-spirited photos of real people in Walmart. Like at the end of the day, these are real people that are being showcased and not some kind of AI generated image or some general article. And if you ever checked out people of Walmart, you can still see some of their, their backlog, but it really feels mean-spirited most especially because it feels like making fun of people who are poor or making fun of people who might be experiencing mental health challenges. They also capture people without their consent. And one of the tags on the website for somebody who is like regularly featured a lot is a featured creature. Somebody attempted to launch a People of Target in the mid 2000s that was a spoof on the people of Walmart. But this had limited success and did not take off to the degree of people of Walmart. Their whole shtick was making fun of snobs, which I think further cements the public perception of Target and who shops there. And when we look at who is actually doing the shopping at Walmart and Target, you do see some class and economic division. Both of these retailers claim to have a similar demographic and there for sure there is overlap, but I'm going to talk about their demographics now to show some of the distinction that I'm talking about. So I got both of this data from the same website, uh, Numerator. So if it's flawed, they are both flawed in the same way. All this data is from uh, this, like this summer, 2024. So in June, 2024, they conducted a survey and they found that 38% of Walmart shoppers are boomers, followed by Gen X in popularity, and the majority of their shoppers are middle income. They describe middle income as forty dollars to $125,000. This is an absolute shit metric because there is a huge difference between $40,000 and $125,000. But when we look at their next popular demographic, it's the... It's the lower end of the spectrum uh, for Walmart, but for Target, the next popular demographic is the higher end. You'll see the visuals on the screen. 65% um, of the demographic is white, 74% female, 38% rural. Target's demographics are 31% Gen X and 28% millennial, 47% middle income, that 40 to 125%. And then they have, as I was saying, more in the over 125%, uh, 62% white, 74% male, and a near tie with suburban and urban. So Walmart actually has a slightly older demographic, which is a bit interesting. And Target has a slightly newer demographic. And when we look at the demographic of Target and Starbucks, there is some crossover between the two, which is perhaps why that pairing kind of made some sense. Overall, Walmart customers are making a lower income than Target customers, which does make sense uh, given 
the overall lower prices and greater selection at Walmart, and then the higher prices at Target. In my opinion, Target has done a better job marketing themselves to women, and they're also of the two. I just feel like more of the TikTok age and more um, more social media friendly. You know, despite Target being the smaller brand, they have much more of a uh, social following. They have nearly double the followers as Walmart. Target social media collaborations are are they're just better. They're way trendier, and they're also really great at using UGC. Um, their YouTube channel is just an example. They have collaborations with Ashley Tisdale and Lore DIY, Lone Fox, Kiva Brent, Jen Che. It, Walmart has been far slower with the brand collaborations, the social media collaborations, and really I feel like tapping into the way that Gen Z and millennials use TikTok and Instagram. Also the brands, they've just been far slower at um, a acquiring brands and overall the website experience of Target is just superior and easier to navigate. I hate the Walmart website and generally refuse to shop there Um, and I think that the online experience can go a long way. Like you know you know fostering online shopping is important. Walmart uses the marketplace setup or like the online marketplace setup where you can have random shops opening and using Walmart as a selling platform and that is not the case with Target. And so I think some of the features of the Target stores and what they're doing just makes them more TikTokable in some ways, you know, cooler brands, more interesting brands, which are totally part of the appeal. And for Target, beauty and home goods have been some of their best sellers, which I feel like they have been leaning into with the additions of the Ulta as an example. I'm now going to share my closing thoughts. Target is not America's number one brand. They are not the most popular place to shop. And when I asked why does America love ta- love Target, I think it's the answer is why do largely middle class Americans love Target? Not everybody loves Target because not everybody can afford to shop at Target. A more premium experience, more premium price point and premium offerings price some people out of shopping there. And I think also the reputation turns other people off. Well, of course, appealing to others. There are also people who probably have an appreciation for the in-house brands, people who are looking to peruse a little bit, to window shop, you know, get their coffee and window shop a little bit, or are looking for specific cool and trendy brands, looking to shop as an experience. I really think editing Sean is going to have some things to say and she's going to pop her head in if she feels so inclined. I learned something new today. I hope you did too, or at the very least, uh, enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me today. And I hope to see you again around here soon.